Brady can chuck it and score! Nice Shabbat curl and drives and scores! And the Senators win it. Five apart, Leonard Chan, Mavic and scores! Great Mavic and scores! Oh, and drops it! Green! Oh, Green again and scores! Fuck, my name is Brandon, and I'm your host. Now, before we get started, please follow us on Twitter at SensTalk underscore and on Instagram at SensTalk. Now, tonight, the Ottawa Sanders took on the Montreal Canadiens in the final matchup between these two teams. And this season, Ottawa has seen some success against this team, and they're looking to continue that success against Montreal tonight. Now, before we get into the recap, a few things. Firstly, use the promo code SensTalk to save $20 US off first purchase on SeatGeek.com. It's a great deal. Take advantage of that today. As well, we are honored to be sponsored by the Premier Culture Magazine in Ottawa, Faces Magazine. Make sure to check out the new May issue from Faces Magazine today. Magazines are offered for free in grocery stores and select locations across Ottawa. And this month's issue features a cover interview with Mark Mathot, Sense legend Mark Mathot. Also in this issue, uh, Mark and Brent Wallace discuss their new hit show, The Wally Mathot Show. If you haven't seen it already, it's on YouTube. Check it out. Great show. The May issue also has features on Gord Wilson, Megan Cheka, and Alex Medius of the Ottawa Red Blacks. Also, do not forget to follow Faces on their social channels for great content, crazy contests, plus more. That's at Faces Ottawa for their Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages. Now, there are a lot of lineup notes, so let's get to them. Firstly, in regards to the injury to Tom Shabbat, does not look good. It's an upper body injury. He's going to be up likely for the rest of the season. Um, he has a chance, I think, to return, but it's like slim to none, so he should be done for the season. Josh Brown broke his foot last game. He will be up for the remainder of the season as well. It's two big losses to the Sens blue line. Uh, Josh Brown, obviously, him being out paves the way to JBD being in the lineup more consistently, which is unfortunate. Obviously, you'd rather him uh, go in to the lineup in different circumstances, but for, Tash- for Tom Shabbat, uh, there's five games left in the season. If there's any chance for a long-term injury, which, you know, there might be, keep him out. There's no point. So him being out for the season sucks, but it does make sense. Now, Evgeny Dadanov before the game tonight as well, uh, injured. So Vitaly Abramov draws in. He's one of, He has been one of the better forwards with Belleville this season, making his season debut. Speaking of season debuts, Oli Alsing is making his National Hockey League debut tonight. Uh, last year in the SHL, he had 20 points in 36 games played. Uh, he's a left-handed defenseman. And uh, he's making his NHL debut, so congratulations, Oli. Welcome to the show. JBD as well draws back into the lineup for the Sanders. Uh, Oli Alsing and JBD are on the same pairing, and they have one game of NHL experience together. They were mentioning it on the broadcast. You don't really see that too often. But in that first period of play, they were pretty good. Now, before the game even started, Ottawa made uh, a signing, uh, that one being Anton Forsberg. He signed for a one-year contract extension today for $900,000. It didn't specify whether it was a, one, uh, a one-way or two-way deal. We shall see on those details. But the real question here is, is Joey Decord or Philip Gustafson expected to be taken by Seattle in the expansion draft? Uh, obviously, this signing with Forsberg means that Marcus Hogberg is going to be gone next season. Um, I think that writing is on the wall in that situation, but does this mean the Sanders expect to lose one at Decord or Gustafson? I don't know. Makes me suspicious, and uh, let me know what you think. Comment below. Let me know what you think about that, but uh, it's interesting, to say the least. Now, speaking of Anton Forsberg, he is your starter for tonight's game, and for the Montreal Canadiens, it is Jake Allen, and Jake Allen continues to do Jake Allen things. He was incredible in that first period of play. Speaking of that first period of play, let's get to that. So, the first 10 minutes, not much going on. Jake Allen making a couple big stops, one off of Ryan Dezingle, another off of Chris Turney. Diving, lunging to stop Chris Kearney. Uh, but with eight minutes left in the period, a nice pass finds Zoo for the point who slaps it. Allen with the save of the rebound. Pinner, Shane Pinto, puts home his first National Hockey League goal. But Ottawa up one to nothing with eight minutes to go in the first period. And congratulations, Shane Pinto. You have been fantastic since you've begun your NHL career less than a couple weeks ago. And you, you deserved every single second of that goal. Um, you earned the goal. End of story, and uh, it's great to see you finally get one. So congratulations, uh, Shane Pinto. But unfortunately, six minutes later, with about 25, 30 seconds left in the period, Joel Edmondson pinches off from the blue line, receives a pass, and then snipes it uh, shoulder side pass Anton Forsberg to draw the game at one apiece. After 20 minutes of play, we are tied at 1-1. One, one. So my first period of thoughts. First period, Ryan Dezingle was absolutely flying out there. Uh, he was great. 
got a couple great chances. He was really noticeable. I wanted to give him a shout out. The Sens defense has played well, considering how young they are. Victor Mete getting some good offensive chances. Zaitsev standing tall to Olsing uh, and JBD pairing, like I said before, uh, standing tall. And Branstrom and Zub uh, contributed on a, a goal today. So um, the defense is playing well, especially for how young they are. And I think that's really, really encouraging. Besides that, let's get to the second period of play where Ottawa and Montreal look to break the deadlock at one apiece. Well, that was a fantastic second period of play for the Ottawa Sanders. After two periods now, Ottawa extends their lead to 3-1 to over Montreal. Uh, in that second period of play, Ottawa outshot the Canadians 17-7. So I think it's safe to say that they played exceptionally well in that second period of play. And it didn't take long for Ottawa to get on the scoreboard in the second period of play. Because four minutes in, Josh Norris streaking right down the middle. He finds Brigitte Chuck, Frank the Tank, right in front of the net, who puts it home on a beautiful pass from Josh Norris. Little Frank the Tank action. And Ottawa takes the lead. It's two to one senators and later on after that goal ottawa they didn't score for a bit but they got a lot of chances and that second period of play ottawa played fantastic jake allen was forced to make some big stops and then with seven seconds left in the period it looks like montreal's gonna escape only down by a goal no 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 eric branstrom the franchise says otherwise throws a shot on that tipped home by nick paul Makes it 3-1 Senators. Nick Paul to flex a glove side past Jake Allen. Top shelf to get the Senators a two-goal lead. A comfortable two-goal lead, hopefully. Going into the third period of play against the Montreal Canadiens. Now for Ottawa. And that third in that second period of play, they play fantastic. Um, you know, offensively, they're really, really good. But defensively, this is what, what I really want to speak about. Like I mentioned in the first period of play, the lack of experience, the blue line for the Ottawa Senators this game has. You know, Oli, all seeing JBD combined. They have one game of experience in the National Hockey League going into tonight's game. Victor Mete on the top pairing. Branstrom with Zub. Zub, this is his first NHL season. So really, there's really no established NHL guys yet except Zaitsev on that blue line. So if you consider like veterans anyways. So for Ottawa, the way they've been, that defense has been playing in that second period and the first period, the whole period, the whole game as a whole has been really, really incredible to be honest. They're pushing the Canadians to the outside, not really giving the Canadians any big chances. Forsberg's game has been pretty easy tonight to be honest. He's made stops, good stops, sure. But uh, most of the saves have been, you know, uh, stops that he should make. Uh, the, the defense for Ottawa has been pushing the pucks to the outside, pushing the Canadians to the boards on the outside, and is clearing the vision and, um, you know, the zone or whatever for Forsberg to see the puck and track it well. So kudos to the Sanders defense tonight. They're playing exceptionally well. I wanted to give them a shout out. Now, uh, I'm going to answer a question before we get to the third period portion of today's video with the Sens up 3-1. to one. So, question comes in from SensFan1. I wanted to talk about this issue. The question is, will George Peros be fired for tonight's Caps Rangers fights? Um, great question. No. Uh, after what we saw today with the New York Rangers front office being fired for their co controversial statement the other day, um, the culture clearly shows that uh, George Peros will not be fired. That being said, should he be? I'll let you decide that. I'm not going to really comment on that. But what I will say about George Peros is I vehemently disagree with what George Peros did the other day with Tom Wilson, where Tom Wilson essentially flat out assaulted Artemi Panarin and Bushnevich. Bushnevich in a, in a compromising position, got cross-checked in the neck by Tom Wilson, and then Panarin got ragdolled to the ice by uh, Tom Wilson as well. These are flat out assaults. I'm all for fights. I'm all for hits in the in the game of hockey. It's the way hockey's played. You can't get rid of fights. You can't rid of get you can't get rid of hits. End of story. I'm not saying you should, but what Tom Wilson did were not hockey. In my it wasn't hockey. It wasn't hits. It wasn't fights. It was assault. What he did it, it was disgusting. It has no place in the game. You're putting people's lives at in, in jeopardy. Long term effect in jeopardy. So for George Peros to give him a five thousand dollar fine and that's it. No suspension for literally assaulting two Ranger players. Not going to cut it. If I was Gary Bettman, I would have a word with George Peros. That's all I will say. But at the end of the day, George Peros, if you're watching this for whatever reason, you're uh, the 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 the, pun the punishment, quote unquote, that you levied against Tom Wilson is not sufficient whatsoever. It's an utter embarrassment, um, and it, this behavior is just going to continue, continue, continue until George Peros and the NHL player safety uh, gets a hold of the situation. Um, you know, uh, what Tom Wilson did is not acceptable. End of story. And he needs to be suspended and he needs to be held accountable because he's running out there like he's Matt Cook. And we all know Matt Cook is not exactly the most clean player in the National Hockey League, nor is Tom Wilson. So it's time for the NHL PA, or not PA, the NHL player safety, um, and the NHL as a whole to stand up and hold Tom Wilson accountable for his 
reckless and dangerous behavior. And besides that, let's get to the third period of play where Ottawa is up by two, looking to hold and get a win tonight against Montreal. Sends win, sends win, sends win, sends win. The Sanders take down Montreal 5-1 to one in a rout over the Montreal Canadiens and the Sanders tonight. Not only did they win the game, they officially won the season series versus the Montreal Canadiens. They are 6-3-1 versus Montreal this season. And in their last nine games, ladies and gentlemen, the Ottawa Sanders are 7-1-1. It's safe to say, Ottawa... Your team is back on track, and the future is really bright. Now, I mentioned Ottawa won this game 5-1. to one. After two periods of play, the Sens were up 3-1. to one. So how do those two goals happen? Well, here's how. Five minutes into the third period of play, RTM Zub, the playmaker himself, Zub, a beautiful pass finds Connor Brown on the one-timer, makes it 4-1 Sanders. That is RTM Zub's second assist of the game, and Ottawa is up by three now, 4-1 to one. Sanders. Five minutes later, guess who? Alex Fermentin gets the puck in Ottawa's end, goes to the Cavs' end, and roofs it. What a goal, as you can see here. A burst of speed by Alex Fermentin. Blows right past Joel Edmondson. Cuts in. A little move right in front of the net. Chips the glove side past Jake Allen. And the Sanders suddenly up 5-1 to one on a highlight reel goal from Alex Fermentin. Connor, dare I say, Connor McDavid-esque. A beautiful goal by Alex Fermentin. Sportsnet said he topped out at 37 kilometers per hour on that rush to the net that ended up going into the back of the net. So Alex Fermentin showcasing his speed on national television. And if you're a hockey fan watching this, we see that on the daily, us Sens fans. We get to see Alex Fermentin do that on the daily. This kid is really special. After that, Ottawa locked it down. They did what they had to do. Anton Fordsberg made the stop. Sanders' defense pushed the Habs to the outside as the Sanders win it 5-1 to one over the Montreal Canadiens. And a huge win for Ottawa and a terrible loss for the Les Montreal Canadiens. Now, uh, like I said, Ottawa this season series versus the Montreal Canadiens was 6-3-1. The last nine games, they are 7-1-1. All systems are go right now. Even when uh, our top defenseman, Tom Shabbat, leaves the lineup, the standards will still put on five goals on the scoreboard against you. So NHL, be aware, this team, they are coming for you. And next season, ladies and gentlemen, this team, I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs, but they are much better than they were when they were losing their first 10 games of the season, essentially, at the beginning of the season. So, what a game for Ottawa. This is their, this is their second last game uh, at the Canadian Tire Center of the season, and they made it they made worth of it. It was a hell of a game, great effort, and um, hopefully uh, next Wednesday against the Leafs, the last game of the season, Ottawa can do the same thing against them and get a route win to close off the season. Now, speaking of all that, let's get to the Sense Talk start of the night. What about you, the fans? It is as follows. I posted the poll. Uh, let's check. Posted the poll uh, 10 minutes ago. Got 80 votes. So here are the results. In fourth place with 5% of the vote, it is Nick Paul. Got a goal and an assist tonight. Third star with 11% of the vote, Shane Pinto. First Dash Hockey League goal. Congratulations, Pinner. Second star with 31% of the vote, Archeum Zoop. Three assists tonight. Fantastic, this guy. Absolute stud. And the first star with 53, uh, two points for him. And the third, and the first star with 53% of the vote, your Sense Talk star on the night with three points on the night. It is Eric Brandstrom. Hell of a game for Branny himself as the Sanders take it 5-1 to one over Montreal. Brandstrom played fantastic. Zub played fantastic. That defensive pairing, I, 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 I think I've mentioned it every single time uh, since they've been uh, put together in every single video anyways, that this, te- that, that this pairing is... It's exceptional. That's because of Zub. Brandstrom is getting to play a style of play because Zub's helping him out. It just really works well. And if I'm Ottawa, I'm locking down Zub long term because this guy is one of the most valuable players on the team right now. And besides that, the next Sens game is this Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time versus the Winnipeg Jets. So we'll see you all then. And besides that, thank you all for watching. Appreciate the support. Be sure to like this video, share this video, circle stuff, and click the big red button down there, and subscribe to us. And most importantly of all, turn, no- turn the notification bell on so you get notified. Whenever we upload a new video. Besides that, thank you all for watching. The Sanders win it 5-1. to one, And I'll see you Saturday when the Sanders take on the Winnipeg Jets. I'll see you then. Pistons go.